quick brown fox jump over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. In 1776, delegates to the Continental Congress gathered in Philadelphia. They debated then drafted the Declaration of Independence. As the President of the Congress, John Hancock was the first to sign, and sign he did, leaving a giant swooping signature, bold as brass for all to read. His signature symbolized his pride and patriotism for all signers knew. If they lost the war for independence, their signatures on the speculation would cost them. So sign they did, pledging through their signatures to give their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor to the United States of America. Howdy folks, and welcome back to Lazy Dog Typewriters. As Kevin said in his introduction, when you're willing to sign something, you're definitely proud of it. And that's where we get the expression of putting your John Hancock on something, like the Constitution, big and bold. And what you see before you here is something that Montgomery Wards and Brother were both very proud of. This is a signature 440T. And what does the T stand for in that number, Kevin? Terrific. That's right, terrific. Well, actually, it probably stands for tab, but we think terrific is just about appropriate as well. And none of us have any idea what the 440 stands for either. So uh, if you have an idea, let us know. Maybe it relates to 44 keys uh, with a zero thrown in for good, uh, good measure, but we don't know. But in any case, what you see in front of you is a JP1 variant made by Brother and labeled as a Montgomery Ward signature brand. So the JP1, as we've talked about before, was one of the longest running typewriter models ever made. So it started out in 1961 and it ran all the way through 1987. So this particular variant is from uh, July of 1966. And it has a higher forehead, if you will. It has a pretty slope curved here and a higher forehead than some of the other JP1 variants, which were flat. And the only real difference, other than the tab function, was this styling. That the side panels just came up a little higher and you had a higher plateau on this particular variant, as opposed to one of the earlier models of 61 through 64, like the Kmart 100, uh, etc., which were flat. And we'll uh, show you a picture of one of those in comparison in a minute. But in any case, let's go over some of the features of the 440T. As always, we have our standard ribbon color selector switch over here, and Kevin will come around and show you our uh, lever over here, which is going to be, what's this guy, Kevin? Um, With the H and the L? Um, that is the high touch and the low touch. That's right, high tension or low tension, or you could consider it touch, I will. It's a uh, spring selector, tension selector, which impacts how much stiffness you feel on the keys. And unlike many others, as we've commented before, many of the Smith Coronas, etc., have these, but they don't seem to make any difference whatsoever, kind of like an elevator closed door button. But on the Brothers, for some reason, they really do. At least the spring here has a lot of tension in it. It makes you feel like you're doing something when you change this. Okay, what's this S and the C button for, Kevin? Um... I think it stands for set and clear. That's right. Margins. And just like 440T stands for terrific or tab, set and clear is the S and the C. And this is how you can set your tabs. If we want to tab, let's unlock the carriage, but if we want to tab at the approximately this location, we just press up and we just set a tab. And that literally pushes a little metal tab in the back of your tab rack out. So when you come over and you press the tab button, it catches on those little tabs wherever you were when you press that tab button. And if you want to get rid of it, let's tab over to a tab, let's get rid of it, pull down. That just withdrew or pulled in the tab, metal tab of metal, tab of metal from the back. That's how the tabs work on these machines. All right, continuing on around, we have our standard functionality. We have a carriage return arm. We have our line advance and line selector here from two, one and a half, one, and R, which is freewheeling, useful for making forms. We have a paper bale with two rollers on it. We have our margins, which are set by push and slide. Notice that they're small and they're white. We have a paper bale. Let's see if I've got this to pop up. Oh, look at that. The paper support, not the paper bale. 
Those are always fun when these go up. They don't always work. And notice it's a single flat bar. That was something that uh, was one of the earlier models, 61 through 64, had a wire loop or nothing. And the second variant, 64 to 75, has this nice flat bar. Okay. And we have on this model a, just a single carriage release lever. So if we push that, our carriage will move and we can adjust its position. So go ahead and take the ribbon cover off for you. And it's a little different. It has some hooks here on the end which are hard to see and a much larger hook on the front. And the other models which have the flat tops, you'll see four uh, rubber bumpers up on here and they've changed that and they've repositioned them up to be on the front. So I have already gone and replaced these. These are clear and nice and soft and springy, whereas they were crumbly before. And you can see it's the same JP1 guts and internals that have worked so well and so long on all of these models. Continuing on with our overview all the way to the bottom, you'll notice some unusual feet on this machine. These dark black feet you see here are custom add-ons we've added because the original feet, which I'll show you here, had uh, worn out. Now these are actually in decent shape, but the little, uh, I guess, nubbin or whatever that came through here um, had broken off, so I decided to get rid of them and replace them. Fortunately, we had some just almost exactly the perfect size feet from our uh, rubber supply warehouse, so we were good to go. They Again, what they had changed in the older variants, these holes are not here, these four pegs, and instead you would have feet that had uh, screws going through them. They would have gone right here. So it's just interesting, very tiny little design changes. Um, I'm not sure why they did it, but I kind of like it better because those, when you have screws going through these things, they seem to wear out faster than if you just plug them in like these guys here. Something else that's kind of interesting to me, very in the weeds, is, I'll zoom in, the uh, product tag here, which we see, the signature, Montgomery Ward, and then we have the date, which you really zoom in. I'm not sure you can make that out, probably can't. But it has a letter code, and then the first number is the year of production, and by deduction, you can figure out what decade it was. So we have a G, I believe. I haven't got my spectacles on. But yes, a G, which means July of 1966 for this particular model. And that dovetails with the information that we have. But it's interesting that they put the name on the bottom, because normally it's on the back. And that's where we see it in a lot of the other brothers. But instead of having the specific information on the serial code, etc., on this particular model, they decided to put it on the bottom. We still have something down here. It tells us Montgomery Ward, made in Japan. We're proud of it. But they didn't put the serial number there. Who knows why? It seems strange. It seemed like an extra, extra bit of work. I'm not sure why they did that. But interesting. Okay, so we're talking about some of the variances on these 440Ts. And we talked about how the Brother JP1 ran from 61 to uh, 87. So interestingly enough, in 1968, they introduced a signature 440T, I guess to supersede this model. And let's go ahead and pull that out. They also introduced a 300T and a 440T. So 300 doesn't stand for 30 keys, so 440 can't be 44 keys, I imagine. So we'll pull those out, and then we'll do a comparison between the 300, the new 440T, and then the older 1966 440T. All right, we'll continue our overview by looking at the outside first. So what we have here is the case for the 1966 440T. Then we move over here to the case for the 1968 440T. And here we have, I believe it's 1967, 300T. So all of them are completely different from one another. And they're kind of interesting. I'll forgive this one for being dirty. He hadn't had a chance to be cleaned up. So working from right to left, <clears throat> we still have our manual for the 440T from 66 is nice and it actually interesting enough it's from 66 but if you look very carefully at the numbers here you have the serial number it was delivered April 27th 1968 it seems so this one sat on the shelf for a little while I'm not sure what was going on with him but yet took him a while to get delivered so let's look at the case this is one of the nicer cases Montgomery Ward had its own distinctive case kind of like uh, Royal did at some later point but if we can zoom out um, it has a nice sort of uh, briefcase feel to it. This is some kind of vinyl leather-like. There used to be snaps here that have worn that would hold this in position, so we'll just have to forego those. That string right there is attached to the original two keys, and this whole thing will, will come down so you can store your paperwork. It's a very functional briefcase, which is kind of neat. 
We have rubber tabs here on the back which hook into the back of the machine and you have this really interesting spring-loaded um, pressure plate which should lock into place by pulling these levers there we go into position but ours kind of wants to spring out on you so I just <laughs> I just manually hold it I'm sure it's supposed to latch but uh, we'll forego that and forgive it for being 50 years old it still holds the machine in place all right so now we look at the 68 model if I can do it one-handed let's see I need two hands all right there we go 68 it has its manual too looks like it got rained on though so we'll put it over here and you see an entirely different looking machine this is still a JP1 but it is made of Psycholac now what in the heck is Psycholac Psycholac is plastic also known as ABS polymers and that sticker just like all the endorsed by parents magazine stickers you see on so many brothers is almost impossible to remove so we're just gonna leave it but we have the same feature set we have the H and the L and what is the S and C again Kevin set and clear that's right your tabs are set and cleared from the on on the uh, front of the carriage we have our line color selector tab um, we'll have our tab uh, sorry margin you notice that the carriage release lever has been altered it's more rounded like a tombstone it's kind of interesting uh, but other than that it's pretty much the same machine of course a little different styling flare outs here because this carriage is plastic and not metal anymore and I'm not even oh this is our paper support I suspect yeah it doesn't spring out when it's in the case at least ours doesn't so we'll look at that at a later date all right jumping over to the 300 Ta -da! it's a nice brown color on the outside kind of a taupe or yeah taupe would be a pretty good color and a light tan for it and so one of the things what's missing underneath the high and the low tension selector Kevin is the um, is the set and clear set and clear has cleared out of town they're not there anymore and you notice that we still have on this model the traditional brother smaller margin now this marginalia if you will is pretty small uh, to make a note of but it is interesting just to see how things change you have a metal carriage just like on all the 100s of the early versions of JP ones this one um, has the same spring-loaded paper support and the metal carriage release that we're used to instead of the tombstone plastic other than that the internals are the same and just you lack the ability to set tabs so pretty neat I think overview the progression from 300 T 440 T and in the later correction earlier version down on the floor quick brown box jumps over the lazy bag it's there Again. All right, let's take a look at it. So, one thing you'll see right away is that we have an elite typeface. So, 12 characters per inch, very clear, crisp and clear. Um, just a wonderful machine to type on. Now, I will say that this machine in particular, of the brothers that I have tried, this has a heavier touch than many. Um, it's not quite as heavy as a silver Seiko. Um, but it is definitely heavier than your typical Brother JP1. I, I don't know what they've done differently, even with my setting all the way down on the light touch. So there is that. It's just a little little heavier on the keystrokes than, than some others. Um, I still really like it, and I think it's just a fantastic machine. So let's go into our pros and cons. Kevin, can you help us out by reading some of our pros and cons? Sure. What's first pro, Kevin? The first pro is that it's a great brother with an all metal construction and real reliability reliability that's right it's a word more of a mouthful um they just work uh, it's really hard to break a brother now it's possible i've actually broken one i had one that had a weird piece piece sheared off in the escapement one time and that was, was a total write-off basically and this machine believe it or not when we got it uh, I was buttoning her up. I was completely done. I was very happy and then I realized hey the line advance doesn't work Thankfully as you can see now the line advance does work But what had happened was underneath this carriage end cap There was a linkage and linkage may not have hardened spring steel Which is very very tough and it had broken and some typewriter repairman or aspiring user had uh, Basically bubbled up a solution by tying some wire and I guess it worked at some point, but it didn't work anymore so I removed that wire and I fashioned a new linkage right here underneath out of some piano wire I had. Not super easy to do. Uh, sounds easy, but uh, maybe next time I'll use a paper clip. But you need some wire that's really strong and tough 
to withstand the thousands of cranks this handle is going to give in the next 50 years as it continues to live on for a century, which I think all these brothers will do, especially thanks to the fact that they have such soft, supple platens, um, which most machines don't. So I should have put that as a pro. But that gets back to their construction and reliability, just wonderful machines. Another pro that they have, that I'll go ahead and read, is they have a full keyboard with a dedicated number one. That's not a huge deal, but if you have to choose, I would choose to have a full keyboard with a one and exclamation point and a uh, plus minus, plus equals. So that, that works out well for us. Uh, full featured, you have user settable tabs, which is nice, and you have a really nice attache case. I mean, sometimes the cases are a big nothing, but I like this one. It's really nice with that leatherette inside. I can see carrying around some uh, paper and some pencils. Um, it's just a nice thing to have. Now, it's not as nice to my mind as some of the Samsonites because it has a plastic case shell. And I think they kind of cheapened up a little bit on those Montgomery Wards and later Royals did the same thing. Um, it's just not nearly as durable as the aluminum um, Samsonites that they used on Smith Corona. So that's a little bit of a ding. So we'll lead then to the cons. All right. So it has kind of a big forehead look is what I call it. I call this sort of the forehead. And I think it's totally fine, but it's not as, I don't know, it's not quite as sexy as some of the others. I like the curves we have here, but it can be a little blocky. Um, but you know, to each his own. Some people complain about the tenny sound that they hear. Um, to me, that's kind of a sound the typewriter makes. I don't he hear a huge part of that, but I know some people do are disturbed by what they consider to be a tenny sound because it doesn't have a ton of sound dampening, um, so you get a little bit of an echo. And on this particular model, again, while I really like the dark gray, and I think gray has kind of made a whole huge fashion return, at least in painting the interiors of houses, um, in the recent couple of years, so I think it looks really good, but some people may not like a gray typewriter. And in fact, I am considering and have had been requested to paint this as a custom machine, and I'm very seriously considering painting this ribbon cover pink or perhaps a light or dark turquoise. I think that contrast would really pop, especially with the white keys, the light taupe uh, carriage return. So anyway, by the time you see this next, it may be a multicolor typewriter, but I really do like it even as it is. All right, thanks so much for uh, watching our video. Kevin is very excited to share with you and hear from you ideas for our 100 subscriber celebration. I have no idea what it is, uh, but he wants to uh, do some crazy things like maybe a home tour, which might not happen, a shop tour or some kind of fireworks display, I don't know, for the 100. So we'd love to have our 100, 100 subscriber, our 1,000 subscribers someday in the far future. Uh, but we, we're glad to have you along with us for this ride. And uh, hopefully our signature characteristic will be quality and good entertaining videos. Thanks so much. Please like, subscribe, and share.